Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that'll help at all. What is it? You're a... Uh... He's the colonel. He runs TPS. Oh. Oh, well, pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Sorry to meet you under such circumstances. Nope, no problem. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's James Freeman. This video is body cam footage that I found on the YouTube channel Every Camera Counts. It shows a Yavapai County Sheriff's Deputy, Cody Winton, pulling over a vehicle for doing over 90 miles an hour and failing to use signals while changing lanes. The stop occurred in October of 2019 on I-17, where the speed limit fluctuates between 65 and 75 miles per hour. According to Every Camera Counts, there has been 123 accident fatalities on this highway in the last five years. I-17 in Arizona ranks as the fourth most dangerous highway in the United States of America. The person in the vehicle that's been pulled over is Colonel Frank Milstead. At the time of the stop, Frank Milstead was the director of public safety for the state of Arizona. He was the top dog in the state charged with keeping travelers safe on public highways. Analysis shows that the most dangerous times for I-17 are Saturdays during the 3 p.m. hour. Milstead was pulled over for doing 90 miles an hour while not signaling lane changes on a Saturday at about 4.55 p.m. How's it going? Great, how are you? Deputy with the Sheriff's Office. The reason I stopped you is you guys going about over 90 miles an hour weaving through traffic, not using you guys' turn signals. Okay. Got your uh, registration and insurance as well, too, please. Where are you guys headed? Flag. Flagstaff. Flagstaff? What's going on with Flagstaff? Well, we're doing a memorial hike. Oh, yeah? For an officer who was killed in the line of duty. Oh, wow, I appreciate you guys doing that. Is the the Flagstaff? So it was actually my late husband, uh, Bruce Harrell, who's a DPS. Oh, really? Same department, the colonel's manager. Oh, my goodness. Um, he was a, it was a helicopter accident. Helicopter accident? Yeah, a long time ago, so like 10 years ago. It's unfortunate. I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. That. No, 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 it's all good. It's all right. Well, thank you. I'll be right back. So the female passenger states that they're on their way to a memorial hike for a fallen police officer, her late husband. She states that her husband died in a helicopter crash, but at this time, we don't know if her husband had been as reckless in that helicopter as the guy that she's traveling in a car with now. Her statement there might have been enough to get the driver out of a ticket, but I don't know, this is pretty egregious. We're talking about a guy doing 90 miles an hour, weaving in and out of traffic, failing to use signals, on the fourth most deadly highway in the United States, on the deadliest day near the deadliest time. In Arizona, these aren't just civil citations. Doing more than 20 miles an hour over the speed limit, or reckless driving, are considered misdemeanors, punishable by up to 30 days in jail. According to the Arizona state statutes, what this driver was doing was criminal. Knowing a dead cop may not be enough to get out of this one, but don't worry, the driver will handle that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that'll help at all. What is it? You're a... Uh... He's the colonel. He runs TPS. Oh. Oh, well, pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Sorry to meet you under such circumstances. Nope, no problem. That's right. They called his deputy back to the car so that the driver can show his Department of Public Safety ID and let the deputy know that he is the head of the Department of Public Safety in Arizona. Now, why would he do that? Of course, his position wouldn't change the fact that he was violating laws that he literally goes out and enforces on other people. It's incredibly embarrassing, but it almost looks as if he told the deputy who he was to try to get out of being held accountable for his own actions. No, it can't be that he's trying to get out of something. Since he is the head of public safety in Arizona, he must be recognizing himself as a danger to the public and letting the sheriff deputy know that he'll just handcuff himself and put himself in the back of the deputy's car. Copy 2729. 
He lost to Milstead, Mary Adam, I'm sorry, Mary Ida Lincoln, Sam Tom, Edward Adam David, first to Frank Common, Frank Robert. Motorcycle endorsement, Out of seven, seven, All right, you guys, information back. Appreciate your time. It's a pleasure meeting you. Your sheriff actually is one of my favorite people. What's that? I love Scott Sheriff Master. He's one of my favorite guys. Yeah, he's cool. Uh, I was sitting thinking, well, one of his guys about to write me a ticket. <laughs> a long ago. I'm a dumbass. I was going too fast. I got a ticket. And uh, anyway, I was just kind of smiling because I know he just bust my balls. But yeah. I appreciate the break. Um, I'm sorry to bother you. No worries. I'm just educating, you know, just kind of. Now it's all you know, good. It's the purpose of the stop, you know, it's to educate it's people, you know. <laughs> but, uh. What was your name? It's Cody Witten. Hi, Cody. Flame Milstead. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Nice to meet you. Nice nice to meet you. Nice all right, you guys drive safe, okay? Thank, Thank you. Now, let me point out a few things here. I know that much of my audience will disagree, but personally, I believe if there's no victim, there's no crime, and therefore, traffic citations are really just about revenue generation, not safety. And as far as data-driven conclusions on this, you can find information that support both sides. Some claim that a higher number of speeding tickets and seatbelt citations reduce the number of crashes significantly. But speed limits on major highways were pushed on states by the federal government. The federal government would give states money for their major highways so long as the states implemented and enforced speed limits on those highways. No speed limit and enforcement? no money. Montana was the last state to accept the federal government's terms, and when they did, traffic fatalities on Montana highways doubled. The safest time on Montana's interstate highways was when there was no daytime speed limits or enforceable speed laws. My personal theory is that when you do allow people to be free and make their own choices, most people will make choices that will preserve their own lives. People make their own judgments to decide what does or doesn't feel like a safe speed to them under the conditions. Of course, not everyone will make good and safe decisions, but have speed limits changed that at all? You see, if speed limits actually stop people from speeding, then no speeding citations would be given because everybody would be obeying the speed limit. But those who are going to recklessly endanger the lives of others are going to do it no matter what the sign on the side of the road says. So the point is that I personally don't believe that people should have their money stolen or be thrown in cages for disobeying an arbitrary sign on the side of the road. These are their arbitrary rules, not mine. But still, they refuse to obey their own rules and they refuse to hold each other accountable when they don't obey their own rules. 